Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at submarine launched cruise missiles and kind of how to use them and sort of one of those things that everybody always forgets about when they go to use them. So what we have today is a relatively straightforward scenario and we have ourselves a little kilo because kilo and of course uh, we can have this little kind of army base here that we're going to strike with a cruise missile. Now many people of course are going to be sitting here going well the kilo doesn't really have cruise missiles but there are some cruise missiles so what I actually had done here is gone into weapons grabbed my two big torpedo tubes well relatively speaking the easy ones to get to for those who are familiar with this actual sub and I basically threw in a sizzler in one barrel and I of course I threw in the caliber on the other one which are really the same missile but they're pretty capable one's anti-ship and the other one obviously is going to be anti-surface so let's go ahead and do the deed here now conventional wisdom says whenever you're launching a submarine launched missile of some kind it's that you want to make sure you have as much room between you and the target as possible but that's actually an interesting problem that that creates and we're actually going to show you both versions of that just to give you an idea of how that conventional wisdom can sometimes be contradictory so first thing to is I'm going to order my submarine here to come up to a little bit shallower of a depth here we're making pretty good speed at about five knots we got plenty of battery you'd never have that much battery let's be realistic even my electric car doesn't have that much battery ever so I'm just going to bring it up here and um, we have ourselves a pretty good thing of course you're like how do you know that there's a ship here the reason we know that of course is because there's a tuple of 95 helping us out over there so um, conventional wisdom would say you would never fire a cruise missile at this distance. Our distance here is about uh, 12 nautical miles. Um, this is really almost torpedo range, and you can actually see just the edge because we have UGMTs, and they're kind of fun, but we're not going to worry about that today. So I'm going to press Shift F1. I'm going to go ahead and click on the target, and uh, we can see the caliber is ready to go. Double click, and we're going to go ahead and pop this sucker off. And this is the fun part. Let's go ahead and switch to the other team. Now you're sitting here going, that other guy is going to pick up that incoming missile immediately. Well, remember, he's on ASW duty, so he's remaining, his, he's keeping his radars and things off. He's not emitting, which means he's not going to notice the missile until it goes active. So what you'll notice here is my total distance when we actually picked up the missile was about three miles. Now, we're moving at real time here. Now, I picked this missile specifically because it has one fun trick, and that's the fact that it has the ability to pick up its speed at the last second and accelerate towards the target and bam, slam into it just like that, basically destroying it instantly. And you can see, whoosh, <laughs> that's the end of that. So let's go ahead and reopen our scenario again real quickly here. I'm gonna go ahead and open this one up real fast. I'll grab this real quick. There we are. So now we've moved ourselves a little bit further away from the strike zone. So what I'm gonna do now is the same thing I did before. We'll come up to our shallow here. I'll order him to creep. There's no chance that he's not gonna be able to do this. Shift F1, go ahead and click on our target. We're gonna go double click like that. So the cam missile's gonna come railing off the rail. And it's got a very, 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 very long flight ahead of itself. Uh, you can see this thing's doing 30 feet above sea level, about 530 knots. Again, I picked this weapon specifically because it's kind of fun to play with, as you'll see. So this thing comes rushing in, and you can tell that our lovely Nusthormenia here has got plenty of time to spot that missile. Now, there's a couple things stacking the deck against our poor hapless destroyer here. Uh, one of those, of course, is that it is radar silent. Uh, the other thing that you're probably aware of is the fact that it uh, just successfully shot down that incoming weapon because I fast forward too quick. <laughs> you could see it actually. I did this uh, last little thing and your weapon contact, and then basically it spoofed it. Uh, did it spoof it? Uh, failed, failed, tried to jam. Weapon malfunction. Oh, we would have got him again anyway. So let's change up the scenario one more time. Now you're sitting there going, okay, so we would have had more time to lock onto it. If the helicopter had his radar turned on, he probably would have noticed it. What would happen if the ship had its radar turned on? Now things get a little different here. So let's go ahead and grab it real fast. We'll flip on our sensors real quick. I'll go active radar, please. Active radar on. Radar enabled. So we'll go ahead and unpause this one here. We'll go bring ourselves back up to pair. Ooh, that would be bad. <laughs> let's not do that. So let's go ahead and shift up one, click on this guy here, give him the old double clicker real fast. Uh, we have to get up to a pretty shallow before we can actually launch one of these things. You can't shoot them from depths like that. They'd basically fizzle before they got up to the surface there to actually break the water and do the thing here. The good news is I think about 164, there goes. Okay, this ship now knows it's been fired at and something else happened. And this is a, one of those critical things I want you to be thinking about next time you go to do this. So he's sitting there, um, he's going rudder to port. He's actually bringing his nose into it, which I find a little strange. I would expect him to beam it. But one of the things you'll observe here is he does not have time to react. If I were all the way out here, he would have 15 minutes to start firing missiles at that thing. Now, the important thing is, and this is the one thing I want you to take away from this, is one of the things you'll observe is the fact that we now are visible on the map, the submarine I'm talking about here. And you're sitting there going, but we shot it from underwater. But we shot it from underwater, which meant this beautiful, calm ocean, not really, um, went, and this missile came out of it and went shooting 
in sight of this helicopter, number one. And number two, it also came in sight of the radar of the destroyer. See where this gets complicated? So that means now, if I click on this, we actually have a surface unknown on a water contact because our weapon broke the surface in view of an enemy unit. See how that happens? Again, it's one of those little details that people don't necessarily catch with command. So let me intentionally drop this contact for a second here. I'm going to grab this guy real fast here. I'm going to say, boop, boop, just like that. Again, he's uh, going to be doing his little dipping sonar thing in a second here. So let's say, oh, we, we sunk that thing. I'm not worried about it kind of a thing. Let's go ahead and launch our next weapon. Um, let's see here. We'll go ahead and launch right at this one real quick. We're finding the Sejeri, which is a fantastic little uh, cruise missile here. It's going to go ahead and let me go ahead and zoom out here so we can actually see this happen. So, um, of course, the missile comes up popping out of the water one more time, and you can actually watch... Ah, the radar in this thing is not quite as good as it is on the Dustromenye. So unfortunately, we don't get that warning of it popping out of the water, even though we're right next to it. Shoot. Ah, I hate it when that happens. But you do get to see that when action kind of a thing like that. So of course, this weapon's going to go pop out. Uh, this one's kind of interesting, too, because it's a very similar design to the other missile. It's just basically a good old-fashioned kind of one of these pieces here. Now this thing's rushing by. Um, we have ourselves an FFG. Uh, remember how this thing's actually sunk? <laughs> You're sitting there going, but it's still there. Why is it not firing? It's not firing because it's sinking. And of course, we just got a big angry radar contact here from an enemy helicopter. It does not surprise me in the slightest. This thing's going to sail right by the hulk of that destroyer here. Let me go ahead and zoom back to this view. Yeah, he's going down. Actually, we got to look at it for a second there. You know, we actually acquired this, I think, yeah, we have a 2D search radar that's kind of doing the deed here. And of course, we have a rapier platoon because like, you know, any James Bond movie, it's always a rapier platoon kind of a thing. You're like, why is it not firing at the cruise missile? Not able. It just uh, was not designed to be able to do that. So, of course, uh, this missile is just going to sail right over the top, and it's going to go wham. Um, <laughs> I missed. <laughs> but again, that's kind of a thing. So as you can see, um, when you're firing missiles with submarines, it's relatively straightforward. You have to make sure you've got the right range. Uh, the kind of unintuitive piece is if they're running their radars, then you've got to actually shoot them relatively short so they don't have time to react. If they're not running their radars, you can basically fire at any distance. The next thing you need to be able to remember here, and this is all we saw very clearly here, is if you fire the missile in range, both visually or a radar, of another unit, you will be detected because it knows where the missile basically popped out of the water. Enjoy.